just a reminder that this is by no means a comprehensive review of all of Python. The purpose of this tutorial is to give you the little bits and pieces that you need so that you can eventually solve the sorts of numerical problems that you see on my channel. Enjoy. Obviously, obviously people don't just use uh, Python as a calculator and this is where everything else builds upon is variables. So I can say, um, let's let x equals 10, right? And we talk about what that means. This means there's something called X and I'm assigning it the value 10, right? So I press enter and now there's something stored and it's X, right? And so if I type in three times X, X has been stored in the memory of the computer, returns 30 and knows what X is. I can go X squared and it's stored X in the computer. I could change the value of X. I could say, okay, now I want X to equal three and now I'll go X squared, right? And I get nine. So this is how these variables work. Uh, these are numbers. I can also store variables as something known as strings. So I can go X equals single quotation marks cat, right? And if I, you know, just press X in a cell and I go shift enter, it'll tell me cat, right? So that's pretty simple. Now strings have special uh, things with them, right? If I wanted to find a cat, let's go like this. So suppose I want to insert something in here. If I want to insert something inside of a string, I can go these curly brackets dot format what this does is it takes the letter S and it puts it right in these curly brackets, right? This is the first, I'm starting to get into things a little bit. So here's X cast, right? Puts S right in here. This is the curly brackets. This is used all the time when handling files. So get used to this dot format. Um, there's another thing here too, of course, I can define my age and suppose I'm like 25 point this, like that's my true age. So it's a big long number and I can show that there. Now suppose I wanted to find a string that says uh, x equals I am years old. So I want to insert age in there so I can go dot format age, right? So now this is a string and if I look at x, it says I am 25 point blah, 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 blah years old. But maybe you don't want to print that many decimal points. Well, you can select how many decimal points in that number you want to put by putting a colon. And then I go, say I want two decimal points, I go 0.2 f. So the thing to notice here is the 0.2 tells me how many decimal places I have. And now it says I'm 25.46. You don't want any decimals, zero. I'm 25 and note that it rounds down to 25. So this is stuff with strings. I've again, I'm building into it, but this is good. You're starting to see these things. Um, so that's the very basics with variables, right? We have numbers and we have strings and I'll get into integers and floats in a little bit, but uh, this is good. So now I'm going to get into four things. And these are the four fundamental building blocks of Python lists, tuples, dictionaries, and arrays. And these are fundamental and you have to understand them completely because they're going to build upon everything else. So what's a list? Well, I can put things in a list, right? And I use these square brackets and I can go say, I want one, three, five, nine, six. So that's my list. And I can look at X and it tells me, okay, you have these things in your list. So I put these things on my list, but it doesn't have to be the same data type. It doesn't have to be all numbers. I can also put cat in my list. One, two, three, five, six, cat. It's just a collection of objects. In fact, I can even put another list in a list. I can put one, two. And so this is my list here. It's got four numbers, uh, the word cat, and then another list that has one, two in it. Now, suppose I have a list and I want to get a certain element of a list, right? Suppose I want this element here. I have to index my list and indexing is something important in Python. So, you know, the index here is zero, one, two, three. So it starts at zero. So zero gives me my first element, one. I say I want the second element of my list. Well, that's really one. Remember, you count up from zero. So zero, one. So that should give me the next thing, which is three. And then if I go zero, one, two, three, four is cat. And then I can go four, five gives me the list here. And then suppose I want to index this list again. Well, this returns a list. So then if I want the two here, I would go X five and then one. And then that gets me two because I'm going a list and then a list. So I'm sort of uh, doing these operations like that. Uh, tuples basically the same as a list, right? I can go one, two, three. Um, I can put the name Pete in here, for example. I can also put another list in a tuple. The question is, what's the difference between a list and a tuple? Well, with the list, I can define X as my list here. And I can say, I want X one to actually be two instead. 
and then I go to X and it's actually changed this three to a two as this element here. So we've modified something, but in a tuple, I can't do that. If I run this and then I look at X here, if I say, okay, I want um, X one to be equal to six, it won't let me. Tuples do not support item assignment. So a tuple is immutable, but a list is, that's important. Um, the next thing is a dictionary and a dictionary is like a list in a tuple, but it's keyed. It says, give me the key and I'll give you the object you want. And they're defined using uh, curly brackets. So I can set a new variable D curly brackets and I can say, okay, my first element will be, if, I, if you give me cat, I'll return you a uh, feline or something. And if you put me dog, I'll return the number set four or something. So this is my key and then my item. So this says, if you give me the key cat, I'll return feline. If you give me the key dog, I'll return four. So if I go D and then I give it cat, it returns feline. And if I give it uh, dog, it returns four. I can also put numbers here too. I could put like uh, 678. And then if I look at D678, it will return four. So again, don't just listen to me, play around with this, try different things for yourself. These are extremely important. And you'll see in the examples uh, how we use them. Uh, arrays are not part of the base of um, Python and they're part of a package known as NumPy. And the way that Python really works is Python is like a central hub, right? And there's nothing truly amazing about Python, but it hosts all these packages that you can use and they all come together in Python. And that's what's really incredible about Python is the ability for it to host all these different pa uh, packages that different people write and then you can use them in Python. So NumPy is like the main package for numerical Python. In order to use a package, I go import NumPy as NP. So that means is take the package NumPy and I want you to call it the variable. It's almost like calling it a variable time uh, NP. So if I type NP, it's this module. And if I want to use the functions or the data types of NumPy, I would say, okay, I'm going to make a NumPy array, for example. So I go X equals NumPy dot array. Right, array is like a list and I would say, okay, one, two, one, five, seven, one, five, eight, six, right? So there's certain elements in this array X. And I can look at X like I did with the other things and it tells me it's an array. Now what's the difference between an array and a list, right? Well, let's go back to the list for a sec. So I have my list X and it's got these elements. I can append to a list like this, uh, X dot append five to the end. So now it puts five at the very end when it wasn't there before. The other thing is if I go, if I multiply a list by a constant, right? What it does is it increases that list by length two. It just doubles all the elements in the list. Same thing if I have a, a list X and I have a list Y and suppose Y is shorter and it's got just uh, like dog and horse. I can add X and Y together and it just concatenates those two rows, arrays together. So that's how adding works with lists. With arrays, it's different. If I go two times X, uh, but I have to create my array X here. If I go two times X, what it does is it takes this array and it does element wise operation on everything inside that list. I can also go X squared and it will square everything inside this array, right? So that's where arrays are different. You can do these operations on arrays. I can even do something as crazy as one divided by X and it'll take every element in this array and it'll do one divided by it. So that's, that's where arrays are really powerful because you can do uh, tons of operations on something at once, right? And so there's two ways of creating arrays that are really important that you'll see with NumPy. There's np.lin space. What this does, I'll show you. I say, okay, I wanna go from zero to 20 and I want a thousand elements. What does this do? It creates an array and it goes up from zero to 20 evenly spaced increments a thousand of them all the way up to 20, right? So it creates this uh, beautiful thing like that here, right? There's the other alternative and maybe I'll go uh, just 10 so you can see more simply. So here it's doing uh, 10 uh, things that go from zero to 20. Uh, the alternative to the lin space is uh, numpy arrange. So I'm gonna set n equals, x equals mpy.arrange and I'll go zero to 20. And I'll say, I want to go from zero to 20, but in steps of two. And now I look at X, it goes zero, two, four, six, eight, blah, 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 all the way up to 20. 
So lens space and arrange are like the two most important NumPy methods you'll use to generate ar arrays. And the reason is as follows, right? Okay, so I have this uh, X here, for example, and I can just square this. And so it squares all the even numbers. So it's like kind of cool, right? Now it's useful with plotting. And so I'll talk about plotting a bit. Uh, the plotting library in uh, Python, the main one is matplotlib dot pyplot, and you're gonna import it as plt. So remember that plt is the variable here. And now we can plot some stuff. So, so suppose I wanna plot a parabola, x um, and x squared, right? So y equals x squared. Well, I need to get a bunch of different points x to put on my plot. So x equals, I would do np.lin space. Let's take, um, we'll go from zero to one and we'll go 100 values. And I'm gonna say y equals x squared. So it's gonna take every element in x, which is all those elements going from zero to one, and it's gonna square them, right? So I can look at x, all these, and y just squares every one of these elements in that array. So now I have a bunch of x's that on my plot, and I have a bunch of x squared. And if I plot um, dot plot, this is the method for plotting, x, y, I get a beautiful looking parabola, which is uh, y equals x squared, right? And what it does is it plots all those individual points and it connects them, sort of like connect the dots with a bunch of lines. And, uh, you know, suppose I go zero, only 10 between zero and one, then maybe you could see the jagged lines a little bit more. And there's different styles I can use for plotting too. For example, if I wanted to plot the, the line to be red and I want it dotted, I would go red, R for red, and then O for put points on the plot and dot dot for the dotted lines. And so that would do something like this. And there's tons of options that you can do with matplotlib. And in fact, if I go matplotlib, right? And I go, uh, well, let's go matplotlib plot. And you can actually read this and it tells you how to do different things. For example, here, it says uh, I can go X, Y, and then it'll plot X and Y using blue, blue, and then O for circles. So that's the way it sort of works. And the stuff you can do with the line width and the marker size and the line style. So have a read through this and play with the different settings because it's important for sort of learning how to do this. So here's your plot. You can make labels. I can go plt.x label in the same cell. And I'm gonna call it x and uh, plot.y label y. And it'll make these little labels here. I can change the size of them too. I, think, I believe the argument is font size equals 15, for example, it'll make it bigger. And I can do this in both things here like this. So this is how to make a plot in matplot in Python. In the second chapter of this series, I'm going to extensively look into NumPy and matplotlib as they are probably the most important packages we're going to use. This video today was a very brief introduction on the two of those. So definitely look forward to that in the future. Thanks for watching.